What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome to my Mythic Banner review featuring Asker. And he is a light mythic unit, boosting up your defense, and he is a colorless infantry beast. So I didn't really expect him this soon in Fae, but here he is. His preferred weapon gives him minus one special cooldown, so it makes Bonfire into a 2 cooldown special and makes Gale Force into a 4 cooldown special. He can also get plus 5 to all of his stats, and he can get a guaranteed follow-up attack as well. So he doesn't really have to run Cooker Post or any of those skills. He can also deal true damage based on 20% of his defense, and he also gets flat damage reduction based on 20% of his defense in combat. Now keep in mind that this is flat damage reduction similar to that of Spring Maria. It's not the regular damage reduction that we know from Spurn, Flane and all of those units. So this is the different flat damage reduction which is going to be absolute in nature. And then he has the standard infantry beast transformation which can allow him to have the tempo skill and also plus 7 true damage whenever he triggers a damaging special. So this weapon is definitely pretty stacked up. And I want to quickly go over how flat damage reduction works because I feel like it's really important to understand that before you use Asker or even face him because he's definitely going to be common. So we have seen some examples of flat damage reduction in recent few months with Spring Maria and also with Asker now having that in his preferred weapon. Now the biggest difference between flat damage and the regular damage reduction is the fact that flat damage reduction like present on these weapons cannot be pierced through with Deadeye, Lethality, Sublime Heaven and all of those skills. So it's a lot more solid in terms of tanking and the regular damage reduction skills from Dodge, Flame, Elamine are always calculated before the flat damage reduction is applied. So flat damage reduction is going to be applied all the way at the end. So if you stack this up with the regular damage reduction, whatever damage that is going to be remaining, it is then going to be getting cut by the flat damage reduction, which makes the unit even more bulky. Another big difference is that flat damage reduction depends on unit's own defense, like in the case of Asker and Spring Maria. So their defense, whatever they have in that combat, they're going to be getting that flat damage reduction. But the regular damage reduction is percentage based. So it really depends on what kind of damage the opponent is doing to you. So the regular damage reduction that we know is quite relative in nature, but the flat damage reduction is, you know, pretty flat in nature. We can easily understand this with an example. So Asker has got 20% flat damage reduction from his defense and he has got 60 defense for example in the combat and then we have the Yenfei uh, with that damage reduction in his weapon which can scale up to 40% so what if both of these units are facing an opponent that can do 20 damage to both of them so in the case of Asker with his flat damage reduction he can reduce 12 points of damage right away because of 20% of his defense and then he takes 8 damage Meanwhile, even though Yenfei technically has more damage reduction, it is still percentage based. So even after getting the max 40% damage reduction, he's still going to be taking 12 damage. So you can see how flat damage reduction actually ends up being um, a lot better, especially if you stack up defense on a unit like Asker. So it can give you better returns and it's also uh, immune to getting pierced by these kinds of skills. So this alone tells you that Asker is going to be an extremely tanky unit. And if you face Spring Maria anywhere in the game, then you know that uh, this kind of damage reduction is extremely good on these bulky units. So that was the flat damage reduction crash course. And now let's get back to the trailer. So after understanding how flat damage reduction works, we can see that he's going to be a bulky unit. And this is further amplified with bonfire attack defense ideal, which does actually have good synergy with his Slotsy skill because he's going to be getting the visible positive effects. So his ideal skill is going to be active. And then he has got a new line of skill in Attack Defense Bulwark. So this skill is basically like Gatekeeper's Detailed Report, but it only has the Super Obstruct part built into it. It doesn't really have the Warp Bubble effect that Gatekeeper has got, which can stop the warping units. So still this effect is really good for a lot of slow tanks. Um, and this can definitely be helpful in the Aether Raids Chaos Season, where you're only allowed to bring one uh, save tank. So you can have this kind of unit you know use obstruct get the minus for attack and defense debuff on the opponent in combat get the 7 hp healing without even using mystic boost as a sacred seal and also protect your units by having this kind of obstruct 
So it's definitely a pretty nice and unique skill, which a lot of slower tanks can utilize, especially with the summer weapons that we have, like Coral Saber, for example, which can give them the auto follow up. So on a lot of bulky infantry units, they usually do not have a lot of slot B options. And this is definitely a new one, which can, um, you know, lead to some good competitive usage, especially as a melee specialist. And then he has got a slot C skill open domain. So this is a very, very strong slot C skill, which is going to be working at start of the turn. So if he's within two spaces of any allies who are not from Fey, then he can give all of the allies within two spaces of him resonance blades and resonance shield and also the time pulse effect if they have their special cooldown at max charge so this is definitely really strong and it is kind of a reference to how asker can open the gates to different realms so that's why you need an ally from different game than fey so resonant blades is basically plus for attack and defense in the combat and then resonant shields is plus for defense and resistance in combat and also follow-up negation on your first combat in player phase or enemy phase. So both of these resonance effects are going to be giving you a lot of extra stats. And the fact that he can provide this kind of joint time pulse is going to be absolutely amazing for any kind of Gale Force team. Or if you're trying to run a high cooldown special like Lethality on your Yuri. So as you can see that in Aether Raid's offense, he's going to be functioning as a really good tank. And also as a really good support unit with that open domain. So I feel like uh, he's going to be really good for the Gale Force compositions. As someone who uses Gale Force all the time in Aether Raids, I definitely cannot wait to get him because he is an upgrade to Ash in that sense. Because while he does not have the teleportation of Ash, he kind of makes up for that fact by having even more uh, true damage with that weapon. And he can also be a lot more bulky with that flat damage reduction. Not to mention open domain can reduce the special cooldown so he can just have a lot of fun with offensive strategies like Gale Force um, and hit and run with pre-charge specials with like Lethality Yuri for example. So it just opens up a lot of options. Even outside of Aether Raids, Asker is going to be a very strong unit and you can always use him in summoner duels or even in Aether Raids defense in the Chaos Season. And that flat damage reduction is not to be taken lightly. Again, if you face Spring Maria, then you exactly know what I'm talking about and how Asker is going to be functioning. So that is going to be Asker, and now let's take a look at what stats he might have and what kind of skills you can run on him. And his builds can vary depending on the game modes and the kind of team you're going to be using him in. So he's definitely quite flexible. So you can have attack defense ideal as his default skill, or you can also try and have attack defense unity. Attack defense unity is definitely pretty good for Aether Raid's offense and also for Aether Raid's defense. So in Aether Raid's offense, if you want to drop a near save armor unit, then you can simply use Asker as your tank and their unity skill is going to be helping you for your uh, melee tanking. And then you can have that obstruct um, with attack defense bulwark and protect your team. And then you can just have him with a far safe tank who can focus on the range matchups. You can also run Bracing Stance, which is going to be giving you the guard effect. And that is going to be really, really helpful in Summoner Duels when he's going to be used as a frontliner. And Asker is definitely going to be used quite a lot there because he's really solid. And the fact that his damage reduction cannot get pierced makes him even more solid. So getting guard effect on him is going to be really good. You can also have close defense 4 to ignore the visible buffs of the opponent. But I'm mainly going to be opting for the stand skill or unity skill myself. Um, for slot B, the attack defense will work is definitely pretty good if you're going to be trying to make him work as a tank um, in something like Aether Raid's offense or even in summoner duels. But lull attack defense is always going to be a pretty good option, especially for the summoner duel side of things where visible buffs are going to be common with duo dogger skill, uh, captain skills like rallying cry for example and all of that. And this is also really useful if you're going to be putting him in Aether Raid's chaos on your defense. Um, again, he can work as a fantastic frontliner in any of the game modes. You can also have him with Wings of Mercy because he is going to be a Gale Force God in the light season. And the fact that he can provide the joint time pulse further makes him into even better mythic unit. So he can just jump in with Wings of Mercy and Gale Force himself. Shield pulse is also a pretty interesting option with something like Miracle. Um, and this can make him extremely, extremely annoying to face, especially in Summoner Duels or in Aether Raid's defense in the Chaos Season. So Shield Pulse Ash is something that I've used quite a lot. And Asker actually uses that much, much better because keep in mind that the regular damage reduction out of 
uh, you know, something like Pavis is going to be getting added before the flat damage reduction occurs. So that can make him really bulky and just skyrocket his survivability. Steady Breath Ignis is an option because keep in mind that Open Domain does bring down um, Ignis to a two cooldown special. So you can always retaliate back with it and hit extremely hard. And Steady Breath just has good synergy with the tempo effect built into his weapon. And then the other usual stuff like Attack Defense Form or Heavy Blade if you're going to be using him on a Guild Force team could work out. And if like Melee and Magic are amazing in Summoner Duels because Brad Catria is everywhere and there are also units like Summer Dimitri. Um, so Deflect Melee can actually help you with that damage reduction. And then you can also just use him as a support unit because he's going to be a frontliner. So overall Asker is a pretty top tier light mythic unit in my opinion. In some cases he can be better than Ash, especially for Gale Force teams. And he is going to be outstanding unit in Summoner Duels and for the Chaos Season. In the Chaos Season especially, um, like in both offense and defense, he's going to be having his usage uh, being a frontliner and a melee tank. And his fodder is also pretty good with attack defense bulwark um, being a skill that a lot of slower tanks can try and utilize and basically function competitively at the very least. And then he also has attack defense ideal. Now let's take a look at my tier list for the light mythics. So I do play ether raids quite a lot. I'm always in vault of heaven and in the light season I would say that the top tier mythics are going to be peony. Asker and Ash. Now Peony is always going to be the queen because she's a dancer and a mythic. So she's a universal unit that is going to be used on any kind of team. And same goes for Asker and Ash. So Ash is pretty nice for the teleportation and a lot of um, safe tanking teams can try and use the mobility to have much better, you know, potential to at least get to the pots and, you know, position themselves. Ash is also really good for Gale Force teams and Ash is also really good for hit and run teams. So Ash is overall a really, really good unit. And like I explained with Asker, um, in some situations, he's going to be better than Ash, especially for Gale Forcing and functioning as a melee tank, where if you're going to be dropping your near save, then he can, you know, just do that role of melee tanking, especially with that flat damage reduction. Now, he doesn't really get the extra stats from the Mythic Blessings, but still, but the flat damage reduction is deceptively insane. And you can always stack this up with like Elemine damage reduction or Flame damage reduction in like Chaos Season or Ether Raid's offense. Um, and that is going to be helping you quite a lot to tank. Not to mention, uh, you know, all of these units are also really good outside of Ether Raids in general. Um, in Summoner Duels, which is another competitive game mode, Ash is really good on any kind of map with, you know, walls where she can help you teleport across the walls. And then Asker is going to be a premier frontliner for a lot of teams. So those are the top tier light mythic units, absolutely amazing units, really flexible as well and can work with any kind of team. In tier 2 I've got Uller and Mila. Now Uller is the kind of unit that a lot of people might not expect in tier 2 because she lacks the support of someone like Mila, Peony or any of these you know mythic units and she's an offensive mythic. But the thing is that she has aged quite better especially with safe defense and a lot of the light defense teams are defensive in nature with Medias nowadays you know with far safe tanks and all of that. So you know, Uller can function as a really great nuke with her weapon and her preferred sloppy skill to, you know, kill a lot of far safe tanks. Not only that, she can also function in the Aether Raid's Chaos mode in Aether Raid's defense because it doesn't matter what kind of blessing a unit has got. So Uller can function there and also be a good far safe tank buster. And I think the mode where she shines the most is Summoner Duels. So you can easily run Bright Catria there and Uller can get quad attacks just consecutively with her, you know, kit, and that is just so strong. She also has the option of White Cap Bow Plus from Summer Elincia now, so Uller is a premier offensive unit, even though, like, she doesn't really fit into the criteria of a support unit, she's still really, really good overall as a nuke, and her offensive potential definitely, uh, you know, carries her, and she can also run, like, AoE specials and stuff, um, so Uller is definitely pretty amazing, and I've definitely used her quite a bit ever since I got her. So, yeah, things have gotten better for her, especially with Summoner Duels and Aether Raid's Chaos. Mela is always going to be useful with her isolation. Of course, there are Eldigans everywhere with high defense, uh, but still you can every now and again, you know, isolate some kind of low defense dancer like Triandra or some other Rally Trap unit. So, Mela is always going to be there with that unique mechanic. 
In tier 3, I've got Ear and Dogger. So a lot of you know that Ear is actually my favorite OC, and she is my most merged light mythic on my free-to-play account. So I've used her extensively, and Ear kind of fits more into the tanking teams where she can provide you the sparkling boost plus support, and also the plus 5 resistance from her mythic effect, and then from her remake sparkling boost. So she can help you tank much, much better. Unfortunately, she doesn't really do much um, in a Gale Force team. I mainly just use her with Temari Dagger and a Sabotage skill. So she pretty much ends up becoming like a smite bot. So Air is mostly useful for tanking teams and then Dagger is more useful for the offensive teams, providing that Pathfinder. And she can herself function pretty well as a Gale Force unit uh, if you run Time Pulse and if you just have her with Flashing Blade. And Dagger can also be useful in Summoner Duels for providing Pathfinder, but uh, from my usage, like, <laughs> I would say that Note and Duo Dogger are just better Pathfinder units because Note can frontline much better because of her bonus doubler and the damage reduction that she's got. And then Duo Dogger is Duo Dogger. She has got her Duo button and <laughs> she's insanely strong. So I would say that Dogger, you know, kind of loses in that Pathfinder role. But still, Pathfinder is Pathfinder, and it's still pretty good for support. So just because these are tier 3 units does not mean, like, they're bad. They're just, um, you know, not as flexible as the units above them, especially, like, the tier 1 units. I use all of these mythics myself and air in every single team. Now, unfortunately, in tier 4, we're going to be having the um, least useful light mythic unit, and that is going to be Freya. Now, I've tried to use Freya so much as well if you've seen my older Etherates videos with Gale Force teams but like she has not really aged well uh, with her weapon with distant counter the damage reduction it just doesn't go well with the tanking because she's a mythic and she you know doesn't have the tanking potential and as a Gale Force unit she doesn't really have the tools either because you have to give up her preferred slot B skill if you want to run a trace skill and then you have to rely on heavy blade to trigger Gale Force which is a painful experience honestly which I've done for months so yeah Freya especially after Medius who's gonna be on the front line and who's gonna be denying any kind of doubles and is so bulky Freya just struggles in like the offensive role as a Gale Force initiator and also in the defensive role so that is gonna be my tier list for light season let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below of course this is just my experience this is not like end all be all but I hope this is still entertaining nonetheless and overall this banner provides you with insane value for the uh, colorless and the red color colorless has got amazing color share with Medius and um, Asker Ashera might be a bit of a dud for some of the competitive players and uh, red has of course legendary Nana has got Plumeria, which is really good color sharing if you want to get merges on her, and Ascended Marita with that coveted Vital Astra. Blue can be used if you're trying to finish up your older merge projects like Peony or Saros or Dimitri. Like these units have sh like, color shared so much in the past as well that you just might have uh, merges on all three of these. Green is definitely the most lackluster color, so most people are going to be avoiding this. Um, and overall, if you want to pull for Asker, it really depends on if he's going to be elevating your gameplay or not. Um, and if you already have invested Light Mythics with merges, then uh, it's really not worth, you know, going after um, Asker or trying to get merges on him. He's still pretty good as a one-off copy though, I'm not gonna lie, because even outside of Aether Raid's offense, he's gonna be amazing in the Chaos Season and Summoner Duels. So he's a spark-worthy unit if he can afford to, but if you're comfy in the Light Season and if you don't really care too much about um, Asker and the things that he brings to the table, then you can you know, just continue using your free Colorless Beast, Ash, and you should be doing fine. Ash is still extremely strong. And the next month is gonna be providing us with a new Pirate Banner, as the seasonal banner, so who knows what kind of units we might see there. There's also going to be Legendary Alm Remix, so that is going to be hype for a lot of people. He was, you know, one of the OG tank busters, but, you know, he did fall off quite a bit. And then Chooser Legend 6 is, of course, going to be happening in the late August. So Brave Selif, Brave Tiki, Brave Chrom, and Brave Female Violet are going to be happening right there. A double special hero banner is also going to be happening in August, I believe, so it is going to be having Spring Sonia. So usually Hero Fest does happen in August, so we might be able to know about that in the Fae channel, so just a heads up. And next month's Legendary Hero Banner is going to be featuring these units, and because Blue Pool is open with Legendary Mer, that's why I think that it is going to be a new, um, you know, Blue Legend. And now let's just take a look at the other units from this banner as well. 
Medius is an amazing dark mythic unit because of him providing on guard to your allies which can protect you from a lot of the passive damage skills including the bowl tower and he's easily one of the best dark mythics if not the best one because a lot of the bridal catcher teams do prefer having Medius over note because he does provide that immunity towards bowl tower and that is really helpful to any kind of low threat range ether raids team. Even outside of ether raids, Medius is still a pretty good unit in his own right. He can be a pretty bulky unit with his stat spread and his sloppy skill, a short rebirth. Not to mention he can also provide the attack and resistance buff from his weapon. And counter control is just amazing for ether raids defense and also for summoner duels. So there's also something that Medius can do. His fodder is also top tier because counter control is a meta skill for ether raids defense and summoner duels like I said and uh, in the high echelons of summoner duels are you're definitely going to be facing a lot of players having any kind of counter control unit mostly duochrom uh, because duochrom is just really insane uh, as a unit so yeah counter control is going to be seeing an increase in summoner duels are at the very least in like top uh, 500 top 200 so it is definitely really helpful there and also in ether raids defense especially in the anima season where you know there's no medias equivalent absolutely amazing unit to have and you can also just use units like duo lift limstella a lot easily with medias because of the on guard effect ashera has fallen off a bit as an astro mythic because we do have really really good astro mythics like plumeria regan Thor and also now Elamine. So Ashera does provide you the extra resistance with her buffs and she can also provide you with the null panic effect and the attack and resistance buff but that is honestly not going to be as enough as you know someone like Elamine who can stop Bradle Catria teams and has that false start and also gives you the damage reduction. So Ashera does provide you some nice support but it kind of gets um, you know overshadowed by what Elamine can bring to the table for a tank and we have seen more units with Null Panic like with Legendary Azura's remix and also with the Rouse 4 skills even though like um, Rouse 4 skills are not going to be used in Ether Raid's offense but still just an example of how um, you know Null Panic might be getting on more of the units and more on skills it can only use so many you know Astro Mythics on her team so it is definitely pretty competitive right there Ashera can hit pretty hard with her weapon, which is essentially like a proxy blade tome. So she can definitely hit hard, but then again, she gets walled by a lot of the far safe tanks, which are going to be seen on many of the Ether Raids defense teams. Overall, a decent Astro Mythic, but there are definitely other Astro Mythics, which most people are going to be preferring to use over her. Her fodder is nice with attack resistance ideal, which is still a pretty rare skill. And you can, I guess, use this with Hilda. Um, the FE4 version in the Grail Pool who does provide the tier 3 version and then Ashera can also provide you with Lull Speed Resistance. Ascendant Marita is an absolutely top of the line sword infantry unit and her weapon can provide her with the quicken pulse effect has got minus on special cooldown provides her with the full null follow up and also has a mini special spiral built into it so she's easily like the best user of vital astra um which is you know kind of obvious because she is the one introducing this skill and vital astra does give her that damage reduction on top of spurn so she can function as a really good sword infantry unit having this kind of null follow up and damage reduction playstyle not to mention she can also function with wind sweep in her slot b and vantage is something that ascended marita can run for ether raids offense um vantage is still a pretty niche strategy nowadays but still marita is one of the better units in that aspect because she has the mini special spiral in her weapon and she is also going to be really fast so a lot of the wind sweep units which can usually shut down vantage strategies are not going to be getting uh enough speed to <laughs> wind sweep marita so she's overall a really really solid unit and she also got a bit of an upgrade with speed smoke 4 which she can easily run in her slot C at a much lower opportunity cost than most of the sword infantry units because marita can pre-charge her vital astra with her weapon so her slot C is kind of open so you can easily run speed smoke 4 and get even more damage reduction on her which is just amazing so overall Ascendant Marita is a really fantastic sword infantry unit and she also has amazing fodder with Vital Astra which any kind of high investment or max investment fast infantry unit is going to be loving. Not to mention you can also inherit Spurn at the same time for even more damage reduction. Legendary Nana is easily one of the best cavaliers and 
pretty much one of the best melee nukes in the entire game because of her weapon, Lance Sword. This provides her the ability to pierce through pretty much any kind of damage reduction, even specials with Hardy Fighter, negating Fang, um, you know, life unending of uh, Legendary Fae. So Legendary Nana is extremely powerful. She can get the self healing from this weapon, and then from her slot B skills, she can get the Kanto remaining plus one, and also gets true damage based on her attack stat. So that can allow her to hit even harder. And then the skill also has the dive bomb effect built into it. So Legendary Nana can nuke and delete pretty much most units, especially in a game mode like Summoner Duels or in Ether Raid's defense. And of course in Arena, she's going to be functioning as a Legendary unit. So a lot of people underrated Legendary Nana, but since then um, that she has been released and if you have phased her in Summoner Duels or something like that, you know how powerful she can be and how she can easily delete units, uh, yeah, especially through their damage reduction and even like defensive specials, which no other unit could do before. So she's really unique in that aspect and definitely a really, really excellent unit. So her fodder is also pretty good with attack speed push for and attack speed menace, so you can inherit those skills at the same time. Plumeria is still a top tier Astra Mythic unit along with Regan and Thor because of her flexibility as a dancer and also because of being a Mythic unit herself. And the fact that she can provide speed is really good for a lot of the offensive strategies. She can also provide the debuffs with her sweet dreams and then provides a bit of attack and resistance support with her weapon. But still, just the fact that she's an Astra Dancer automatically makes her a very high value unit and definitely a pretty good merge project if you're trying to increase your Mythic merges for those seasons. Of course, she's not as good as Peony technically because she doesn't really provide you with the Otter's buff, but still she can always make use of her resistance and run skills like Sabotages to support your team. Her fodder might lose value in future when Sabotage Speed does become an easily available skill or it's put on some kind of Grail unit. Attack Resistance Push 4 is decent and Attack Res Drain is always going to be useful for any kind of uh, slow magical flyer or a dragon. Legendary Dimitri definitely has got a lot of updates in the last few months with Speed Smoke 4, Vital Astra, so he can be a lot more solid unit now and Atrocity of course makes him pretty unique because of the true damage that he can get and also because of the Omni Smoke effect built into this weapon which, which can make him a pretty scary unit especially at high emerges and high investment. Aired Bar is still a pretty nice weapon giving him that damage reduction and also minus one special cooldown so that is always good for making full use out of Vital Astra. Bonus Doubler could also be considered like a nice addition to Dimitri's arsenal because now he can get plus 6 to all of his stats if you fully buff him up. He's gonna be useful in Arena because of being a water legend but he's of course really useful in summoner duels as well as a frontliner or even as like a raid boss I guess and the fact that he can go deep into the enemy lines and then just debuff them up with atrocity and speed smoke 4 definitely can make him a pretty scary unit for a lot of teams especially if he's played well and if he's supported well. Dimitri's fodder is alright, Odd Tempest is a pretty niche skill uh, that is only most useful for like player phase builds, uh, for Aether Raid's offense or defense or even for summoner duels on someone like Bright Catria. So not the most universally useful skill and Sturdy Impact could be useful if you're trying to uh, make sure that your unit does not die to physical hits. So a lot of ranged units have low defense so Sturdy Impact could be useful on them. Overall, alright fodder, nothing really too special. Saros is an anima mythic unit who can provide you with extra attack and she can of course open up the 7th slot. So she functions as a pretty nice uh, bulky anima mythic but of course she's a melee unit and she doesn't really provide you the support to the level of uh, Medius in the dark season where he has got on guard and then he has got Cant of control. So Saros is not going to be that bulky and not that supportive in that aspect. But still she's a decent unit with bulk with Dragon Wall and her stat spread and she can get the auto doubles with Aurora Breath and also have the follow up negation in the enemy phase. So she can work as a frontliner and also with Odd Tempest if she just wants to go ahead and nuke. Her fodder is pretty useful with Dragon Wall but not often you're going to be running Mirror Impact on some kind of Dragon Wall Dragon. Uh, so the other skill is not really that much of a value. Dragon Wall is definitely pretty good. Peony is still a top tier and just like I said for Plumeria, it applies to Peony as well. Except for the fact that Peony can give you the Orders buff which is absolutely amazing for the mobility for your team and she can also be useful for 
the long range support with Flower of Joy. So in the Cardinal direction, she can give you plus three attack and speed, which is amazing um, for any kind of Gale Force strategy or any kind of offensive strategies. Getting merges on Peony is going to be helping you in ranking in Aether Raid's offense light season. And Peony is pretty much the easiest and the best unit that he can be incentivized to get merges on because she's going to be used on every single team anyways. So getting merges on her is always going to be nice. Unfortunately, her fodder is not that nice. She only has Fortify, Resistance 4, and Aerobatics, and B Duel Flying 3, not even the version 4. Um, so yeah, her fodder is a bit on the underwhelming side because um, these skills are available on other units or are just not really that impactful. Arthur is the unit with best fodder, I guess, of this uh, green color in this banner because he does provide you with Grand Vulture Plus, which is basically the non-seasonal version of the Plagian Torch. And he also has Attack Speed Ideal 4 and Speed Resistance Menace, which you could inherit at the same time along with the weapon or just get both of the tier 4 slotty skills. But as a unit, he does face absurd competition from the green infantry mages that have preferred weapon. And we definitely have quite a bit of those. Uh, still, his offensive stat spread is workable if you do use him, and he can definitely be pretty offensive. But overall, you cannot just compete with a preferred weapon, uh, green infantry mage like you know Lewin or I guess even legendary mage Violet, I guess. So that is going to be a bit unfortunate for Arthur, but definitely really good fodder. Ultra is an Anima Mythic unit who can give you extra defense and he does have Canto 3 built into his weapon and Brutal Shell does pre-charge itself. So honestly, Ultra is a lot more useful in summoner duels than he is in Aether Raid's defense, I would say, because he's not really going to be as bulky as someone like Seros. And Canto is not the best for Aether Raid's defense because often it can lead to some wasted actions. Uh, so many people do run Slaying Hammer on him or now we do have Stout Axe. So those are always an option. But Ultra is definitely a pretty solid Axe Cavalier um, if you want someone who can hit hard and who has got Canto in his weapon. So having Canto in his weapon allows him to use Flow Guard or flow refresh or even lull attack defense and if you run hit and run on him which is a pretty budget thing then he can essentially retreat four spaces back which is really really amazing so i've used him a ton in summoner duels and he's definitely a pretty fun unit there but nowadays we do have a lot of competition in terms of axe cavalry units with legendary xander summer dimitri but the niche which Ultra has got is the pre-charged Brutal Shell and the burst damage output that he can provide you with his special and his high attack stat. And his bulk is actually not that bad, so you can definitely survive many hits. His fodder is nice with Attack Defense Menace and G-Dual Cavalry 4. So G-Dual Cavalry 4 could be useful if you're trying to use someone like Cecilia or Wallheart in Arena, but... Uh, the 180 BST units don't really cut it for Arena nowadays, even for tier 20. Um, so that has definitely lost quite a bit of its value. Flow Refresh is not going to be as good as Flow Guard, but at the very least, you can get Flow Refresh and the Mana Skill at the same time. Legendary Celica is waiting for her remix and refine because she does struggle quite a bit uh, without it right now. And we do have Ascended Celica now who does have Solo of Zofia as well. And because of her weapon that is a lot more modern, she's able to fall into the Soul of Zofia range a lot easily. And definitely has a lot more fun playstyle because of the miracle built into it. Um, so yeah, Legendary Celica is in desperate need of some kind of remix and refine. Uh, because getting into the range of Soul of Zofia could be hard at times, especially in Arena and in other competitive game modes. She does face competition from the existing uh, infantry green mages who just have better preferred weapons than her. Her fodder only provides you with Suspiro 3 because attack speed oath is present in the Grail Pool. But I wouldn't really recommend you to fodder her off just now because with her remix, she might be able to get the tier 4 version of the oath skill, which is definitely going to be pretty fun. Uh, on a lot of units, so definitely hold on to the extra copies, I would say. So I hope you all enjoyed my comprehensive Mythic Banner review. If you did, then make sure to share this video with your friends who are trying to pull for Asker. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. It helps you tremendously, and if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more free videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Deadeye and Lethality against Asker. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.